and welcome. My name is Alan, and today we're going to be looking at some uh, PACs, some political action committees, and specifically in one particular area. But I figured first we'd start off with what PACs are. In the United States, a political action committee or PAC is, an, is a tax-exempt 527 organization that pulls campaign contributions from members and donates those funds to campaigns for or against candidates, ballot initiatives, or legislation. So they're very uh, usually monetarily powered lobbying groups. The legal term PAC was created in pursuit of campaign finance reform in the United States. Democracies of other countries use different terms for the units of campaign spending or spending on political competition at the U.S. federal level, an organization becomes a PAC whenever it receives or spends more than $1,000 for the purpose of influencing a federal election and registers with the Federal Election Commission, the FEC, according to FEC cam, uh, the Federal Election Campaign Act, as men amended by the Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act of 2002, also uh, known as the McCain-Feingold Act. At the state level, an organization uh, becomes a PAC according to the state's election laws. So, Again, heavily monetary powered lobbying organizations. And they're usually, it's almost like a legal form of bribery just so you can work in one direction or the other. Uh, the actual 527 organization or 527 group is a type of tax. Uh, U.S. tax-exempt organization organized under Section 527 of the U.S. Uh, Internal Revenue Code. It is created primarily to influence the uh, selection, nomination, election, appointment, or defeat of candidates to federal, state, or local public office. Like I said, Mona high-end monetary lobbying organizations is essentially what they turn out to be. So, yeah. Um, and here I pulled up a list of packs there is available. We've got accounting packs. And usually they're associated with companies. The American Institute of Certified Public Accountants PAC The Deloitte and Touche Federal PAC Ernst & Young PAC KPMG Partners, Principals and Employees PAC PricewaterhouseCoopers PAC so yeah, you have some packs that are definitely of companies. Aerospace Systems, uh, BAE, British Aerospace, I would guess, Enterprises. Uh, Boeing Pack, Lockheed Martin Pack. Uh, you've got Affiliated Party Pack. 43 alumni for Biden. Um, two American Bridge, 
or the American Bridge 21st Century Asian American Action Fund Democracy for America DCCC DSCC Democratic Governors Association Democrats for Education Reform Democratic Legislative Campaign Committee um, that's the DLCC Midwest Values Pack Move On Pack National Committee for an Effective Congress Pack People's Action Pack R Regarding Power Pack Welcome Pack and then you have Republican Packs America First America First Policies, Americans for Prosperity, Citizens United Political Victory Fund, Club for Growth, Committee to Defend the President, Congressional Leadership Fund, John Bolton Pack, uh, Maggie's List, um, Move America Forward, National Conservative uh, PAC, Our Principles PAC, Republican Main Street Partnership PAC, uh, Restore Our Future, Susan B. Anthony List, yeah, and then we've got all kinds of others here, I won't name them all, but Agriculture, alcoholic beverages, animals, energy se sector, uh, under which we have uh, alternative energy, coal, electric, oil and gas. Now look how many are for the uh, carbon releasing industries, but how many for our alternative energy? Two. Yeah, don't give me this bullshit. Big wind, big solar. No, you're an idiot. Environment, ethnic, finance, banking, credit, and insurance. Under um, which there are several here. Gun rights, PACs, insurance PACs. Under ideology, there is bipartisan or nonpartisan, only that one, conservative PACs, liberal PACs, uh, other PACs. Under healthcare, you've got hospitals and care facilities, pharmaceutical and biotech providers. Entertainment, whoa, food and beverage, legal, manufacturing, marijuana, natural resources, real estate, retailers, tobacco, labor, leadership, under leadership we've got house leadership, house members, senate leadership. Senators, former elected and public officials, religious, ethnic, social issues, under which there is LGBT issues, abortion, pro-abortion rights, and anti-abortion rights, transportation, under which there's air, freight rail, road, construction you got foreign affairs packs and yeah that's what they've just got listed on wiki uh pedia here and that's not even all packs just to give you some clue of how deep their tendrils reach into the government now what I want to point to, since this seems to be such a current big issue, is the pro-Israel packs.
This is an article from The Guardian. Pro-Israel groups target U.S. lawmakers critical of Israel's war ahead of primaries. So, yes, there are pro-Israel packs and groups looking to target uh, members of Congress who speak out on the genocide the Israeli government is committing. Rashida Tlaib and other Democratic squad members and one Republican, Thomas Massey, I believe it is, are targets of attack ads as critics support opponents. Yeah, the pro-Israel lobby in the U.S. is airing attack ads and beginning to back primary opponents to challenge Congress members who are not voting or supporting Israel's war on Gaza. During the last 10 days, groups that support Israel have launched ads in at least seven districts targeting those who have been particularly vocal in calling attention to the humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip opposing Israeli military aid or criticizing Israel's government. Now think about that. These are packs that want you to so lick the balls of Israel that they're trying to support candidates who are against members of Congress who call out the genocide that the government of Israel is committing. So you're, this, this is just further proof. You do the right thing, you get screwed over in government, apparently. Now we know why the government's so fucking corrupt. Because groups won't help you unless you're willing to be corrupt, to be bought out. And this is why I have pretty much decided that all pro-Israel packs shall be seen as extremist groups in my eyes until they say, okay, yes, we are supporting a horrific situation and trying to pay you off to accept it. Because that's what they're doing. If you want to be honest about this, that is what they're doing. Now, some of the packs we can look at. There's Pro-Israel America. And it is an American advocate advocacy and lobbying group that supports pro-Israel policies. It serves as a channel for donations between members and endorsed candidates, which includes incumbent members of Congress or challengers, regardless of political affiliation. And it is closely affiliated with APAC, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, and has a bipartisan history of endorsements. Yeah. So it's like, as long as you kiss Israel's ass, we'll pay you. That's essentially what's going on here. And as I just mentioned, this is the demon, the biggest of all. APAC, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. This is the monster of all the pro-Israel packs. It is 
Satan. It is Lucifer. It is Baal. You know, all the, all the big demonic names you can think of. This APAC is it. The American Israel Public Affairs Committee is a lobbying group that advocates pro-Israel policies to the legislative and executive branches of the United States. One of the several pro-Israel lobbying organizations in the U.S. Yeah, several pro-Israel. APEC states that it has over 100,000 members, 17 regional offices, and a vast pool of donors. In addition, the organization has been called one of the most powerful lobbying groups in the United States. So yeah, it's an evil, evil organization. It is the demon, the monster, death's head, if you will. And look, while we're on the topic here, I'm not anti-Semitic. I believe, you know, the Jewish people have a right to exist. Duh. Shoot, I'll even give you that Israel has a right to exist. However, it is their current actions. You cannot commit genocide and displace a whole group of people because you want to. That's not how the world is supposed to work. You know, having a genocide committed against you does not give you carte blanche to go in and say, well, now it's my turn to commit a genocide. No! And that is where my disagreement stands. Yes, I disavow, uh, you know, what Hamas did. Well, I disagree with what Hamas did. I should probably better say. Um, but, you know, I also disagree with what the Israeli government has been doing in response. Period. There is no argument on that. I've done said, you know, I strongly disagree with what Hamas did. I think it's an atrocious act. But the current act being committed by the Israeli government goes much, much, much further as an atrocity. You know, there is an old saying, an eye for the eye, an eye for an eye will eventually make the world go blind. And that's what it feels like here, except, oh, you poke me in the eye, I'm going to poke every last one of you in the eye. It's like, really? Seriously? I've made the point before, it, it, it's like Israel got attacked, smacked in the back of the head, and then Israel's turned around, 
grabbed them by the Palestinians by the necks. Not even Hamas they're really doing any damage to. But it's got grabbing Palestinians by the neck and going, Why are you making me defend myself? Why are you making me defend myself? Why are you making me defend myself? That's what it feels like. But yeah, honestly, let's, uh, we got two more, J Street, it's supposed to be more reasonable as far as an, a pro-Israel lobbying group, says it is a non-profit liberal advocacy group based in the U.S. whose stated aim is to promote American leadership to end the Arab-Israeli and Israeli-Palestinian conflicts peacefully and diplomatically. It was incorporated November 29, 2007. According to J Street, it's PAC, the J Street PAC is the first and only federal political action committee whose goal is to demonstrate that there is meaningful political and financial support to candidates for federal office from large numbers of Americans who believe a new direction uh, in American policy will advance U.S. interest in the Middle East and promote real peace and security for Israel and the region. But what I want to see done is there needs to be some serious changes in Israel. First, take out that right-wing government, that horrific right-wing government. Then, you need to correct all the propaganda that's been pushed on Israeli citizens, making them believe that Palestinians exist only to kill, to hurt, and thus must be treated like animals. Peace never truly comes until there is a level of equality. If you're no longer attacking and hurting, but you're not helping them or treating them as equals, then it isn't going to matter. Honestly, I don't believe there can be a two-state solution anymore. It must be a one-state solution, both sides living as equals. This two-state bullshit does not work. No, we need to have a one-state solution with both peoples living as equals. That's just how it is. But yeah. And then another Israeli, pro-Israeli uh, pack, or pro-Israel, I should say, NORPAC, Bipartisan Multi-Candidate Political Action Committee, working to strengthen United States-Israel relations and was founded in New Jersey in 1982. Its activities include fundraising for senators and members of the United States Congress who support this relationship, regular emails regarding the situation in the Middle East, and the annual mission to Washington. About the only one I could probably really stomach is J Street because they actually mentioned, yes, we do look for a peaceful solution, 
between Arab-Israeli and Israeli-Palestinian conflicts peacefully and diplomatically, but I'm of the belief that we cannot have a two-state solution. It will not work. It must be a one-state solution where everybody is treated as equals. Period. Don't sit there and go, but, 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 but. Shut up. What we need is a level of equality and proper treatment. Because we know the propaganda that has been used by the Israeli government on the people of Israel and make them believe certain things about the Palestinians. We know how difficult it is the fact that the ability of Palestinians to move about out of Gaza is heavily restricted and even at that point if they are allowed can take several hours just to go you know a mile down the road here this has been pointed out to us over and over and over it's time to listen. Netanyahu and the right-wing government of Israel need to go. Period. Period. It don't matter, you know, what else is said. Equality needs to happen. Just as slavery and Jim Crow were despicable moments in American history, this is a despicable moment in Israeli history. It really is. And you have to think what happens when future generations learn. Because we see, like I said, there's already propaganda that's trying to inform the citizens of Israel with a different mindset. Honestly. It's just wrong but yeah and again let me say this don't go out and attack anybody who is Jewish don't go out and attack anybody that is Muslim. That accomplishes nothing. Hate only begets hate. But when there is evil directed monetarily, it does severe damage. Yeah. Which is why I really feel we need to end the ability of PACs to completely affect the American political system. But, namely, in the current climate, we need to end how these packs 
affect our system just because people want an end to the crisis, to the humanitarian crisis, to the slaughter. Because it's not right. It, it isn't. As a human being, you should feel this in your soul, in your heart. I'm not even a religious person, but this hits to the core as something that is just morally wrong. It's unjust for this these kind of actions to be taken. I mean, I don't believe it's right for anyone to be just murdering and slaughtering and committing this mass campaign of genocide on Palestine that is happening. And then the pro-money groups for Israel that defend this, well, the pro-money groups of Israel that pay uh, to attack those who had attacked the crisis, the, the humanitarian crisis, yeah, it's just wrong, honestly. And I, I don't know what else to tell you if you are unwilling to recognize that. Period. Anyway, as always, boop, educate thyself. Think, read, study, learn. Someone tells you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources. I'll be putting these links in the description box below the video. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, later.